Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 11 of the video series where I critique and process your image. In this episode, we're taking a look at this image from Tuomas. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Tuomas told me he's from Finland and he's just starting out in photography. And I thought this would be an interesting image to try to do because it's going to be challenging. My goal would be to make the snow nice and white but not blow out the sky so i think that's going to be rather challenging now before we actually get into the processing let's just talk about the camera settings um, it's 1 30th of a second at f11 iso 100 it's a 23 millimeters at a 17 to 50 millimeter lens now i'm not sure what type of lens that is i suspect it's sigma so we'll go to lens corrections click remove chromatic aberration and click enable profile corrections and it does say it's a sigma 17 to 50 f a 2.8 lens so f11 is perfect now i've mentioned probably in every one of these videos that when you shoot a landscape you'd like to be two to four stops up from wide open because that's when your lens will perform at its best and you'll get the sharpest picture possible and uh, f11 is four stops up from f 2.8 so really very well done uh, can't ask for more than that and I think f11 was the good choice over let's say f8 or f5.6 is because we have stuff in the foreground and we have stuff way off in the background so you're gonna get maximum depth of field and still be in that lenses sweet spot so really well done now where did uh, where did Tuomas focus on this I don't know but if you remember one of the earlier episodes I talked about there's a plug-in that will give you the focus points for most Canon and Nikon cameras and a few Sony cameras and to use it we'll go over to library module and we go up to library plugin extras and we'll go down to show focus points and we'll come up with this screen and it looks like uh, Tuomas used a multi-point focus system so you could see the camera used all these focus points that's what the red and black means it's locked AF points focus achieved so though it not not any one of those was used exclusively they were all used personally i never i don't think i ever use a multi-point focus system there are sometimes with nikon um, when i'm photographing wildlife where i'll use a group autofocus uh, but normally i use single point and most professionals will use a single point and you'd like to move that point over exactly what you want in focus. Now in this case, there in this scene, there really isn't a strong subject. And I've mentioned in past episodes that if you have a landscape, but it has a strong subject in the scene, like it's a, a landscape and in the middle ground somewhere, let's say there's a boat. The boat is the main subject. You're going to focus on the boat. Don't worry about um, hyperfocal distance and stuff like that. That's my opinion. All right. That's not written in stone anywhere and um, I'm sure people will debate me with that point but it works well for me and try it out maybe you won't like that way and you'll prefer hyperfocal distance and in this case it says right here I think it should give us the hyperfocal distance is 2.54 meters and to me that's inconvenient because you have to measure that out so you'd have a, a smartphone with an app on it you dial in that you're shooting at 23 millimeters at f11 and it's going to tell you the hyperfocal distance is 2.54 meters then you're going to have to measure exactly 2.54 meters and you're going to have to have something there that you could focus on so to me that's always very inconvenient that's why i don't care for hyperfocal distance although if you did use it it works great it's it works fantastic the other alternative i mentioned is to focus a third of the way up in the scene and in this case it would probably be somewhere in here so you would use a single focus point you would focus like right up in here somewhere and that would give you enough depth of field to get everything in the foreground and all the way to the background in focus at f11 typically so that's the way i typically do it and i would have probably suggested uh to almost do it on this shot it did work well for what he did though he used these multiple point, multiple points and the cameras nowadays are you know marvels of technology and they do a great job so he did fine all right now as far as the composition itself i love that we have this uh cracked ice coming up from the corner so it kind of gives us a diagonal line coming up through the image we also have this kind of like hill of you know i think it's maybe the bank of the 
river or lake or whatever we're on here, it kind of comes out too from the side. So it, we have some nice lines leading us through. We have the line of the uh, pine trees, it looks like back there. Um, really nice lines. So we have a lot of uh, interest in the shot. Now, to process it, it's really, this is an image that really could really go a lot of different creative ways. And the way I might prefer to do it will be the opposite of the way you'd prefer to do it. And that's good. We don't always want to be the same. If we all process things the same, life would be boring. All the images would look alike. So for me, my goal would be is I'd like to make uh, the ice as bright as possible. I'm not going to say white as possible, but as bright as possible. But I want to make the sky as detailed and colorful as possible. I don't want to blow that out. And that therein lies the challenge. Because if I, let's say, turn highlights up, well, that even doesn't work well. Let's say I turn whites up to get the ice brighter, then the sky starts to get blown out. So we have a challenge here. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the white balance. There's a little mixed white balance in the scene. We have a very warm sky, but the ice and everything in the foreground and midground is really in shade. So really, I, the camera was probably set on auto white balance, and it probably picked um, you know, something in between, I would bet. But let's go with cloudy. Just see right here and see what that does. And it warmed up the sky considerably, well, a little bit. And go to shade. And I like shade. I like what it did with the sky. Uh, maybe warm the ice a little bit too much, but I like what it did for the sky. And really, sometimes what this comes down to, when you're doing these basic panel adjustments, and what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to do the basic panel adjustments for one part of the image. And then I'm either going to use a graduated filter or a brush to adjust the rest of the image and um, that's why I picked this this image because this happens quite often we get an image like this where we really have a lot of differences in the different parts of the image and just doing a uh, basic panel and whatever you know tab adjustments over here will tend to make the um, at least part of the image not look as good as we want it to so I'm going to process more, more or less for the sky right now. So uh, I'm going to take highlights down, give me some, you know, a little more detail up there. And then with shadows, I'm just going to try it different ways. And I'm just going to open it up a little bit because I'll probably add contrast so that'll darken it slightly. Um, I'm not going to add clarity yet. I will process all the way in Lightroom, but I might bring it over to a plugin and I want to show you complete Lightroom processing though, but I'm not going to add clarity right at this point yet. So I am going to add some vibrance because I'm interested in the sky. Not a lot, like six, I think. I don't want it to get too unrealistic, but I want it to be bright. We're going to go to tone curve and medium contrast, strong contrast, and I'm going to go with the strong contrast for now. We're going to go back up to the basic panel and I'm going to get a quick white point by holding the shift key and a double click on the word whites. That brought that down. And I'm going to hold that shift key and a double click on the word blacks and get the black point. All right. Now, even the sky is kind of difficult. We <laughs> The left half of the sky is very bright and the right half of the sky is kind of dark. So it is presenting a problem there as well. So. We'll see what we could do in a minute. Now, with it overall, it's okay. I, I'm not super, super satisfied with the way it the sky looks. So I'm actually probably going to work on this a little more with some different tools. But right now, I'm going to make a virtual copy of this image. And the reason why I'm doing that is the virtual copy, if I do decide to send it over to a plugin, I would send it over to the plugin now. So. I'm going to stay working on the original image and finish it in Lightroom. Now, I want to add clarity. So I'm going to add some clarity. And it's OK, right about there. And I'm pretty much done, I think, with the basic panel for now. I might come back and do some touch-up adjustments with it. Now, the ice. It's very dark. I want it brighter. Now, we could add a vignette or not a vineyard, I'm sorry, we could add a graduated filter. 
Um, I've mentioned this several times. I don't care for graduated filters. And, and people comment in the comments section a lot of times, why don't you use a graduated filter instead of the brush or whatever? Mainly because I don't care for the graduated filter. It's just personal preference. Now, if I wanted to just, for example, use the graduated filter, I would come up from the bottom like that. And what it's doing is I have exposure up. It is making it brighter here, but it's still kind of dark in here. And, I mean, it looks okay. I, I, I have to say, it does look okay. It, it doesn't look bad at all. That is definitely a way to do this. Personally, I think I want to use a brush. All right. So, But the graduated filter, I think, did a great job. So we're going to just get rid of that. And I'm going to use the brush, and I'm going to have exposure up. It's actually up the exact same as it was in... The graduated filter so that's good so i'm just going to brush now i have feathering all the way up flow and density all the way up and i do not have auto mask checked now i could come in and readjust this but i'm going to definitely get this the snow and ice brighter and I'm going to get those those reeds back there for now. Maybe I'll come in and change that in a minute, but we'll see. And we'll see about the trees. We'll get some detail in these trees back here. This is all kind of creative decisions that you would be making, whether or not you want detail in the trees or not. Okay. I am going to just hover over this little button and see the the mask overlay and see exactly where I actually painted and it looks okay so I did this adjustment here now I could come back in and I could readjust it slightly if I want um, let's see if I add um, some clarity to the ice um, not so sure that does much to it now, what I do want to do is I think I want to add a second brush to it. And I've done this trick before where you kind of do, uh, like you brighten up areas to add a little tonal variation. So I'm going to make this little ridge back here a little brighter. Now, it's way bright now. I'm going to readjust it. And I'm going to have to get a smaller brush. So this might take just a second to do rather effectively. Now, of course, I'm talking and doing this and trying to do it as best I can. Um, if you were doing this at home, I'm sure you could do a much better job because you wouldn't be talking to your computer screen as you're doing it. All right, so we have this. I'm going to pull exposure down on that. So it's about a third of a stop more exposed than the rest of the ice. And it just adds that little bit of tonal variation. Now, if you want to even get another one and you want to come in here and you want to like do something like this, I mean, you could do that as well. I'm not going to, I don't think. I don't think that's needed. So I'd say that's okay right there. All right. Now, I kind of like the ice now. The sky's okay. Um, now, over here is kind of brighter than over here. We could do a couple things. We could, again, get this uh, graduated filter. And we could reset it and maybe bring exposure down a little bit. We could come down from over here and try to even out the sky a little. That, that actually looks pretty decent. Then what I would do is inside of the graduated filter, I would get click on brush and I'd erase. And I want to erase the graduated filter that overlapped onto these trees and any of the ice down in here. I just want it up ba basically in that corner of sky up over here. Okay. All right. So that's good. Now, this guy over here, let's see. Um, 
Let's go to the HSL panel and let's go to the luminance tab of the HSL panel. There we go, luminance tab of the HSL panel. And I want to do a targeted adjustment. To get the targeted adjustment tool, you click right here where this little circle is. And when you click that, your cursor turns into the targeted adjustment tool. And I want to target the blues in the sky right here. And I'm just going to click with the left mouse button. And when I do, the cursor will disappear so you won't see what I'm doing. So I'm clicking right now with the left mouse button and I'm just dragging my mouse straight down. And as I drag my mouse straight down, you can see how it brings that blue down. And what it actually did, if you look at the luminance tab, it actually brought the yellow and the green sliders down. Because that happened to be whatever I clicked on was predominantly yellow and green. So it helped even out, I think, the sky a little more uh, in that, you know, just just doing that targeted adjustment. So another reason why I picked this image because I figured I might do a targeted adjustment. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, let's go to detail. Let's zoom in. And there is quite a bit of noise. So I go to noise reduction first only because that's to me the most important thing to get rid of the noise first and then we could sharpen it afterwards. All right, so kind of drag around got a lot of little noise up in here but I'm not going to really worry about that too much because we're not going to really be able to get rid of that effectively. Now sharpening we're going to look at something we want kind of sharp and I would say probably this ice in the front. There's nothing in here that's in terribly detailed so we don't have to go too crazy with sharpening but I think uh, sharpening around 43 noise reduction around 79 is good. There was quite a bit of noise in the image, especially in the dark areas of the image. And those of you that are just starting out processing your images, you'll find that the darker parts of your image tend to have more noise. So if you tend to underexpose shots because let's say you're exposing for the sky and the rest of the image is underexposed like this image was, you'll tend to have more noise in a shot like that. Um, so I say detail is done. I could just then uh, finish it up with a light vignette and I would say that that image is done. So I'm going to get another virtual copy of this just for the heck of it. And on this virtual copy, okay, I am just going to reset it. So there's our original file and here is our Lightroom process file. So we're done in Lightroom. Let's move that over there. So there's the original there's our Lightroom process file. Um, very, 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 very colorful. So you, I really, all I did as far as color was concerned beside that targeted adjustment up here was the only thing I really did was change the white balance to shade because it really was a predominantly shady shot. And I turned vibrance to plus six. So that sky was very colorful. Um, so just, you know, get that out right now. The, um, now this shot here, from this point on, I might prefer to do this in a plugin. Now that targeted adjustment I did on the previous, uh, you know, on the uh, Lightroom version, that would be a good adjustment for Nick Viveza, where you could do a targeted adjustment right up in here. I haven't been using Nick plugins as much lately. Uh, I do use the Silver Effects Pro 2 still. That's the black and white uh, plugin. I think that's pretty much the best black and white plugin I've ever used. But in my opinion, um, McFun, uh, Topaz, On One, um, kind of left Nick in the you know in the in their dust because Nick uh, when Google bought out Nick they really only updated it I think once or twice. And over the past maybe four or five years, maybe three, four years. Whereas the other manufacturers of plugins have always been coming out with updates and updating and coming out with newer technology. So that's why I've been using more of those other plugins. And before anyone accuses me of anything, I am um, an affiliate for those other companies. I'm not telling you to go buy them though, all right? I just want to, I just get tired of people saying I'm hawking stuff because I'm making money off it. Um, 
So I do prefer to use those. It's the truth, okay? Now, this image here, at this point in my normal processing, I would I did that basic panel stuff and everything, is I would send it over to Topaz Denoise because there is a lot of noise. So I'm going to do that in this instance. So I'm going to right click on the image, I'm going to go down to Edit In, and I'm going to go down to Topaz Denoise 6. And it's going to add it a copy with Lightroom Adjustments with those settings. I'm going to click Edit. So it's going to create this TIFF file that we're going to be sending over to Topaz Denoise. Now, I didn't look, I know it was a Canon RAW file, and I didn't uh, notice which model Canon um, Tuomas used on it. So normally with mine, I use Nikon or Fuji. I would pick a preset and go from there. So I'm just going to pick a random preset. Is that ISO 100? But as I mentioned, it was kind of underexposed, so we have a lot of noise. So I'm going to just like randomly pick uh, 5D Mark II at 400, 5D Mark III, I'm sorry, a 400, and that actually did pretty well. This is what I pretty much do, though, is then I look around, and it did a really nice job getting rid of the noise, is where it says add grain, this slider, so I pick a preset, and then where it says add grain, I take that down to zero. I never add grain. Sometimes with some images, if you add a little bit of grain, fine grain, it will give the illusion that the image is sharper than it is. So I just take that down. So we're done there. So I, I'm really am done in Topaz Denoise. And that's usually what I do. I know a lot of people lose a lot of sleep over getting the noise out of your image. I technically, I guess, don't. I just use Denoise and trust it. And the preview you get over here in Denoise is always way worse in resolution than what you're actually going to get when you see it in Lightroom or when you print it or when you get a JPEG of it or whatever. It always seems to look very bad in this preview window. Uh, the resolution, it looks like you softened it so much that it looks horrible, you know, but you're going to have to trust me. It looks much better once you're actually in Lightroom. So it takes a second to process here. And this is it. It usually blinks a couple times. That's why I'm sitting here waiting. As Lightroom is catching up with the metadata from the file. Okay. So I'm going to move this one next to the actual virtual copy that I sent over. So here is the image that I removed the noise. And here is the original image. And you just eyeballing it at this um, magnification... You, could, you can't tell that it's softer or anything. But if I hit select them both and hit C on my keyboard to compare, and then I zoom in, you should be able to notice that there's a lot more noise in this one. Like if you look right through here and then right through there, you could see that it, it eliminated the noise. And it didn't really overly sharpen or soften the image. So... Okay, that's that. So, this is our noise reduced image. Now, I always reduce noise early in the processing game because if I do anything that might sharpen the image or make um, add a lot of contrast to the image, it really enhances the noise, and the noise is that much harder to get rid of. So, I like to do noise reduction as early as possible. So, I'm, I've done it. And now, I'm going to send it over to on one effects 10 and I'm gonna send the original um, I don't need to uh, make a copy so I'm just gonna send it as is now I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm gonna be do here now those of you not familiar with this uh, on the left hand side are presets on the right hand side are filters presets are a bunch of filters that are pre-chosen and they come for a specific look, like a landscape or a sports type image or something like that. I prefer to just add my filters individually and do it that way. So the first thing I want to do is deal with this snow. So I'm going to get a tone enhancer. And you can see it brighten the snow, it brightened the entire image, right? So I'm going to get this mask by clicking here. And then I'm going to paint out. You see I'm in mode, paint out mode. And then I'm going to get a bigger brush just because I'm in a hurry. And I'm going to paint out this tonal adjustment from the sky. 
and I am going kind of sloppy because I'm in a hurry. So for the sake of this video and you're not here all day, but trust me, I would be much more careful on this. Actually, I didn't want to paint it out from the pine trees and I overbled as you could see. Okay, so brightness, uh, highlights, let's bring highlights up, see how that, it doesn't do a lot, does it, slightly. Whites are all the way up, so I'd have to really mess with exposure to get those, that ice a little brighter. I'd say like that. Okay, that's that. Now I want to, I think, get a color enhancer and it turn off auto temperature adjust there I want to affect the blue and I want to take the saturation of the blue and turn that up slightly and I want to take the brightness down and see what it's affecting it's really not affecting much so I'm gonna delete that it really isn't doing what I hoped it would do so I deleted that I'm gonna go do another tone enhancer and we're gonna turn off this auto and I'm just worried about this part of the sky over here. So I'm going to take brightness down. And then I'm going to get a mask. I'm going to invert it. And then I'm going to uh, paint in the effect and see what I could do here. Now, I don't know if this is going to work that well, but we'll see. And I'm going to feather it at 100%. Okay, and a little more like that. I think that looks decent. Okay, like that. All right, now finally I'm going to get dynamic contrast, which I often add. It's a little bit harsh, so I'm going to pull it down to about 50, I think. What I often do is to rest my eyes, I'll turn it off, and I actually close my eyes for about 10 seconds, then look at the image and then turn it on. And I like that. And then I'm going to add a vignette. And let's see what a strong vignette looks like. A soft vignette. Um, I like the strong vignette, but it's making it too dark over here. So actually what I could do is click here and I could offset the vignette. So I'm going to this is like maybe center right here, so I'm going to go right to center like that. And then I'm going to pull the size down a little bit like that. And we're going to click Apply. I'm done. Okay, so that is our on one and topaz noise reduced image. This is our Lightroom image, and this is our original image. So if I click on all of those and hit R, not R here, sorry, go over to library mode, library module, and we go to reference view. Then we have the original image on the left. This is the Lightroom image, and this is the Topaz Denoise image, let's call it. So you can see they're very similar, very similar. Um, that's it. That's how I go about doing it. Now, I did go very quickly through the On One and the um, Topaz, for that matter. Um, I do have entire video series on those, if you want to learn how to use those. So, um, I apologize for that uh, if I went too quickly. But the main thing is I wanted to get an idea how I would go about processing this image um, just using the plugins that I use and if I were to use Lightroom only all the way through. Now one thing real quick is I want to mention is, let's go back over here to develop module. Bear with me one second. In my Lightroom version, remember I whitened up back in here and it's not whitened up back in here with the, the uh, in the version I did in on one. Now I could do that even though I'm done in on one. I, I could just get my brush 
and just turn exposure up a little bit and I could whiten this up even though I'm you know pretty much did it everything I wanted to do in the plugin I could just do it here real quick if that was important to me okay so just a real quick job all right so there is the on one topaz denoise version there's the lightroom version and there's the original version all right finally that's it i hope that made sense what the whole reason again why i picked this image because i thought it was very challenging to try to get it balanced to get the snow white enough without blowing out the sky and that's the way i chose to do it again you could do graduated filters the graduated filters seem to do a decent job i preferred to use the brush um, it's really personal choice how you like to do it. So that's it. Thank you, uh, Tomas, for sharing this uh, image with us. I'm sorry I pronounced your name incorrectly. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.